Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective and today we are looking at another ThinkPad. A lot of people out there seem to like these and I can't really blame them. So this one is a particular model on loan and it is, if you can't tell by looking at its form factor, of the X series and this is actually the X240. Now the X240 was a real change in design philosophy for the X series and also the ThinkPad series in a variety of different ways. So let's start with the CPU. The CPU in these X240s started to use the U class. So if you're not very familiar with Intel's line of CPUs and their nomenclature, don't start because it's not really all that clear. It is clear from year to year, and as so long as you understand that the rules and laws that apply in one year don't necessarily mean that the designations and rules and laws apply to other years of those designations. At any rate, I'll get off my soapbox there. Uh, this particular unit is uh, holding the i5-4300U, so that's a 1.9 uh, gigahertz processor. And this particular series was available with the i7 4600U, the i3, or pardon me, the i5 4300U, the i5 4200U, and a much, you know, more budget conscious i3 410U. Now, this was a very large change for the uh, X series because before that, they were normally the regular Ivy Bridge. Uh, higher wattage CPUs. So you are getting about a 10 to 20% decrease in overall performance. I'm not 100% sure about how confident I'd be with those numbers. Uh, but that being said, the wattage uh, use of that processor is significantly less. And that means that cooling isn't as great of a challenge and you can also get a much longer battery life. And that leads me to my next point is that this machine has two batteries. So it has an internal battery that you cannot access without removing the top, or pardon me, the bottom case. And then, as you would normally expect, you do have a removable battery in the back. And these came in, I believe, three sizes. Uh, this being the intermediate size, I believe. I'll have to double check that a little later. While we're on the bottom, you will notice for disassembly that there are no bays that you can access. You do have to take the entire cover off. And that's actually not that big of a deal. Uh, it, all the screws are captive and all of the uh, internals are easily accessible. In fact, how about if we grab a set of screwdrivers and take a look at that right now. Disassembly of this is either pro and con. Uh, the very first thing I obviously need to do is to remove the battery. There is a lock catch over here and one catch over here. And if you had a third hand, you could easily remove that. So this particular laptop is running a 48 watt hour uh, secondary battery. And of course there is another battery inside as well. So, we pretty much start and go all the way around the case and remove that one center screw there. I will tell you now that if you are looking to replace the keyboard on this fellow, it is a nightmare. You pretty much have to take apart the entire unit. You have to disconnect the touchpad and the fingerprint reader. It can be a little bit of an ordeal. Gone are the days of removing a screw on the back and just having the keyboard uh, sachet out of place, if you will. And that's one of the, I guess, concessions that you have to make with these units as they get thinner and lighter and more compact is that there are going to be a few trade-offs that will occur. Now, that being said, while we're talking about the keyboard, one thing that you'll notice of an absence of is any kind of drainage holes on the bottom. So gone are those. If you get liquid on it, it'll still resist it. There's lots of little covers on the inside to help, but it's far from an ideal uh, scenario, if you will. All right, so that side of the case is nice and loose. 
and we'll just give this side some physical encouragement. And there you go. That was really easy. Now, some people might say, oh, well, there's no little drive bays or anything to access, but geez, guys, that's, uh, that's pretty easy. So even though it's not quite the way they used to make them, that's pretty, pretty easy. Uh, the spring catch for the battery is also pretty easily serviceable, which is handy. So if anything were ever to go wrong with those, or if you wanted to say, <coughs> remove one, uh, you could certainly uh, do something like that. So this is very sturdy, very nice, feels a lot better than say the Yoga 14 that I looked at not too long ago. Anyway, enough of the cover, let's look at the internals here. So this is the secondary internal battery and this is a 24 watt hour affair. And there is a series of modernizations that were certainly made and this is very small and compact on the inside, which is really, really cool to see. And I'm just kind of marveling at it. This is the first time I've opened an X240. Here is our single RAM slot. And this is a four gigabyte stick. And just like any other RAM slot in most laptops, you can pop it and wiggle that out. So we got a Samsung uh, four gigabyte piece. Sorry, I'll just get the camera to focus there. There we go. And in a beautiful turn of events, we've got a very easy to access um, thermal system, like our CPU is right there. So in that regard, this is actually really easy to access and provide maintenance on because everything is on the right side of the board facing you, which is super handy. So over here, we've got our Wi-Fi card and that looks pretty straightforward. And over here, it looks like um, an M.2 bay, because it's got that single screw up there and the two connectors down there. Uh, moving over here, we've got our two and a half inch uh, drive bay. And I believe that there is a single retaining screw over here for the whole bracket. So this is an interesting choice. Um, this bracket is held in place with a Torx T7. That is strange, at least in my mind, because it's like, well, everything else is Phillips, so why, why would you make this bracket the only one that you need a proprietary screw to remove? So we've got a two and a half standard SATA bay drive with a connector, and that connector is secured to the board uh, right here. Underneath, we can see access to the magnesium hybrid chassis that's hanging out in there. And again, very, very nice that everything that we need to access is forward facing, uh, with the exception of the touchpad and of course the actual keyboard. If you want to get the keyboard swapped out, you have to remove every other component in this machine. That is, your lot. So our battery is held in place with one, two, three uh, retaining screws, it seems. So let's go ahead and remove those. And you will notice that there are these little black uh, shields on everything that's supposed to offer some protection. That's the operative word, but it's not the uh, amazing drainage protection that we're used to seeing on the older ThinkPad models. So there is a little bit of concession there. All right, so that's lifting uh, backward right there. And it looks like this was actually our other battery connector. So let's go ahead and yank that. Our CMOS battery is located underneath of the internal battery. And then this right here is where our touchpad is gonna be housed. And underneath this uh, sticker, is actually the ribbon cable that disconnects this whole assembly here. I know that's a bit strange. So that means that this has got to be our keyboard connector. Actually, looking at it now, I probably should have figured that out because it looks like every other ThinkPad keyboard connector that I've seen. The whole board is just this narrow, skinny thing that's being wedged between essentially the two batteries and the drive bay. So in terms of miniaturization, it's actually quite impressive. 
in terms of what they're doing there. The speaker, or speakers, are yet in an odd place. You have one hanging out uh, down here at the bottom of the case, and then you have one over here. So again, they're doing that weird asymmetrical thing, but if you're buying a ThinkPad, you're not buying it for the sound. That's uh, something that just continues to remain true. So, that being said, let's uh, reassemble this fellow and then take a look at some of the other things we've got going on. It's worth noting that when you are reassembling this guy, that there's one thing that you want to be a little aware of, only because if you don't do it right, there does create a gap at the back of the battery compartment here, and it'll kind of look a little weird like this. So I'll just make sure that this is popped off, but you've got a series of catches here that line up with a series of catches on the back cover. And the best way that I can tell to make sure that these fellows are lined up is to kind of bring it in and then put it down. Uh, taking it off doesn't really seem to matter so much as when you're putting it back on, though. You'll hear a couple of clicks. Let's make sure that they're nicely wedged into place. And it'll look a lot, uh, a lot neater along the back. In fact, in terms of catches, there are very few plastic clips. They probably learned that that was just not the right way to go about doing things. Okay, now that we have the unit back together, there are a couple things I wanted to mention. The RAM slot, as you saw, there was a single one, and its maximum uh, supported size is 8 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, sorry, you're not going to get any uh, 16s in there unless you do some significant modification to the laptop. So let's just keep going around with specs. Uh, it is rocking a Intel integrated graphics one gig um, card if you will. Uh, Wi-Fi in this particular unit is the AC7260 so speeds are pretty respectable. It did come with another version where it was the 7260N so just be aware there are two different cards that come in this particular unit. This one that we have here on the table today does have the optional integrated fingerprint scanner, so that is kind of nice. The keyboard, as I've mentioned when we were disassembling it, is not easy to remove, and it also does not feature any of the spill resistance that we used to see in the X220 where there was dedicated drain holes to get liquid out of the machine, which is unfortunate that we were uh, had to lose that feature. However, you know, I don't really know how many people directly benefited from that, but I'm sure that there are many that would be uh, hopefully willing to share your stories in the comments down below. Do you think that that's a feature that these machines are significantly worse off for not having? I'd really like to know your thoughts. The keyboard on this particular model is backlit, so that means that they were able to thin out the bezels on these machines, so the microphone and web camera are the only things that are up there, and you will notice that the kind of ThinkPad lip that we saw on the older models has now been significantly reduced in size. And speaking of significantly reduced in size, this is a thin machine and it is light. And I have to say that this feels really good in the hands. If I was looking to replace my X220 with something a little quicker or a little newer, I would be severely tempted. You still have all the major ports that you need, headphone, microphone, combo jack, USB 3, which can be set to always on. You have a standard size SD card reader. You do have a SIM card slot if it came available with that. You do have your standard network port. Your back is 100% completely clean, which I actually quite like. There's not even a power cord back here, so everything is coming out either the left or the right side of the machine. It is no longer using the barrel plug. It is using the square adapter. So for those of you that have drawers and drawers of ThinkPad adapters, I'm sure you have a fair set of those as well. Uh, you can clearly see the copper exhaust fan for the CPU. We've got VGA, which will probably remain the standard of meeting rooms for many years to come. 
another USB 3 port, and a mini display port so you can adapt that to whatever you need. So as you can see, it's not lacking for ports anywhere along here. The only thing it perhaps doesn't have that's more modern is USB Type-C or even Thunderbolt 3, but that's what the newer line would obviously have. But at the same time, you kind of have the basics of what you would truly need in a day-in, day-out situation. And this machine feels rock solid. In fact, I would say that it feels far better in terms of build quality than the X220, which isn't to say that it's more durable, but it certainly feels like a good little machine in the hand. This was also the first year that they went away with the dedicated click buttons for the track point and for the touchpad, and I have mixed feelings about that because when I was looking at the ThinkPad uh, Yoga 14, I had mixed feelings about this kind of trackpad. It still will click anywhere, but I, I found it very spongy. However, this one has a considerably shallower travel, and I think that I would probably get used to this one a little bit quicker. The display is nothing really to write home about. It's certainly not touch, and the viewing angles are actually surprisingly good for an X-series laptop. Tilt up and down will certainly affect color, but left and right angles are actually quite good. Uh, this is not the best panel that these machines came with. They actually came with a variety of different panels, and they range from, let me check my notes, a HD 1366 by 768 TN panel, and then everything else was IPS, and there were touch options available as well. And the resolutions could go all the way up to 1366 to 1920 by 1080. So in terms of panel options, there's actually a lot of upgrade ability available here if you uh, were searching one out with a different set of options. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I really hope that you enjoyed this video introducing the X240. This is actually a really nice, well-built, uh, high-quality little machine. It's not going to have the allure of some of the older uh, X-series, and I understand that. It is using the Ultrabook processor. It doesn't have the dedicated click buttons on this particular model. However, it's a good step forward overall. Many things, unfortunately, are lost, but I feel that the net gains on this particular unit were pushing the ThinkPad series, especially the X-Line, in a very positive direction. If you have any questions about this particular unit, it will be sticking around for a couple more days because I have to say I'm very tempted to add this one to my collection. Please leave them in the comment section down below, ask on Twitter, and I'd be more than happy to answer your questions there. And there will be a video coming up very shortly, and once it's released I'll put the link here to comparing this between the X220 that I use fairly often uh, shortly. And that should be uh, really exciting, I think. At any rate, if this is the sort of content that you like, I would encourage that you uh, would be able to share your support uh, for the channel. And you know the big three by now, but if you don't, I'll put them up on the screen there, there, and there. And I shall see you next time. And again, secured again with this little metal bracket very securely. Scare, 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 scurly.